Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another episode. Today's episode is kind of an amalgam of questions that I've accumulated over the past uh, week or so from people emailing in at eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com for any type of questions that they have. Um, so I'm going to just basically compile them in an effort to get all of my answers and my take on all these questions out and give as much value to you guys uh, that are listen that are listening in the audience to extract as much value from this as possible. Um, now, some of these questions are pertinent to Canada and are going to be pertinent, pertinent to what kind of experience they're looking for in Canada and the type of experience that people that are looking to move to Canada have. Um, so that's why if you're watching on YouTube, uh, the graphic has a lot of Canada. It is t It takes place in Canada. Um, but not all the questions here will be pertinent to Canada. And I do believe that a lot of the questions will be pertinent to people based in the U.S. also and, you know, from all over the world. But before we go ahead and get into the this episode, I want to let you guys know about the resume review program. It's still going on. If you're interested in having your resume reviewed or having interview prep with me or just having a career consultation, you can email me, eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and get to it, guys. Dear sir. So this person writes in um, saying, dear sir, greetings for the day. Hope you are doing well. I would like to introduce myself first. I am a senior clinical data manager at ICON in India. So for those that don't know, ICON is a major CRO. Uh, they have operations all over the world. So they go on to talk about their qualifications. They have a master's in clinical research from Cranfield University in UK. Um, work experience, they have clinical operation, worked as a CRC and as a CRA. They worked for six and a half, almost six and a half years as a clinical data analyst and now a senior clinical data manager at ICON. So, and they're looking for a job overseas. And so they list about nine questions here. Uh, so they say, right now I am planning to move to Canada and I have a few questions. So just right off the bat, before I get into these questions, this person has a lot of experience. They have about nine years of experience in clinical research. So uh, I'm curious as to why, um, you know, they think that uh, they need to, I guess, move from uh, India to Canada. Maybe the family's moving, um, you know, whatever, whatever the reason may be. But um, maybe they're having trouble getting a job in clinical research. Uh, I, I can't see why that would be the case with as much experience, experience as this person has. So let's go ahead and get into the question. So will I be able to get clinical data manager jobs in Canada? So obviously I've never lived in India. I've never lived in Canada. So I can only go off my what I know, my experience, and my knowledge of the industry. So you know, if you have six years of, as a senior clinical data manager for a major CRO, like ICON, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to get a job in Canada. Um, the best way to find out is to apply. Apply for jobs. See what the recruiters say. See what the hiring managers say. Uh, that's not going to look bad on you if you end up getting a job and then decline. Um, I mean, if you do that a lot at the same company, then, you know, that's going to look bad on you. But, you know, get that experience. Get that, uh, get that information because, you know, it's going to be different for everybody based on their experience. So you have data management experience. Why wouldn't you be able to be a data manager? And by the way, one of the strategies that I recommend when you're trying to move countries is you already work with a major CRO. So I would see if they have openings or if they will, you know, hold a job for you in Canada um, as a data manager in your current job. That's the best way to go about it. Um, even for people that are not in clinical research, I recommend that they get in clinical research in their own country and then try and move because a lot of times they'll hold the job. They may not offer any relocation assistance. I mean, you're a senior data manager, so they might. That's that's fairly high up. Um, but, you know, if, if you just want to move to the country, I mean, then you don't necessarily need relocation assistance. Uh, and, you know, that's my best recommendation. So you already work for a major CRO and they have operations in Canada, I'm sure. I know they have operations all over the USA. So that's the best way to go about it, in my opinion is to um, go with your current employer and, and get a job through through that way um, and just transfer. Um, and it's a lot easier to transfer when you already have a job. And, I mean, if you worked for another one, Par Excel too. That's another major CRO. So you can reach out to them and see if they have any openings also. 
Um, so you said, which provinces have high demand or where you can find jobs for clinical data manager? So guys, I mean, this is just a quick Google search. Um, you can go on Indeed and look for clinical data manager jobs. Um, like I said before, I think the best way to do this is indeed.com or to go through your company. So you can go on your company website, see where they have openings, or you can just ask around your company. Um, you're in data management already. Maybe you know some of the analysts in Canada. Ask them. Um, so that, that's how I would go about that. And otherwise, just research on the internet. Do Indeed, Indeed.com. Um, I don't have that information off the top of my head because I've never lived in Canada. Um, are there any companies which I can apply for my hometown and get a job in Canada? If yes, where's the proper channel to apply for a job? So yes, most of these CROs and pharmaceutical companies are global companies. They have operations all over the world. So they do have operations in Canada. Um, so yeah, another best way to do that, indeed, um, reach out to your network uh, at, at your company if you know they have operations in Canada. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the best way. Um, and you can go on your company's website and see what kind of openings they have there. Uh, what is the salary for my experience? Um, y you would know better than, than I would for senior clinical data manager. Um, and I know you're asking this in response. I mean, I think senior, senior clinical data managers make definitely six figures. I'd, I mean, I don't, definitely over six figures. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but you're going to have to uh, see what the exchange rate kind of is for India versus Canada. Um, it may be a little different just because cost of living is probably different. Um, so, I mean, you can look this up on Indeed and Glassdoor. It's on the internet. And um, see, yeah, they said, I would like to settle with my family, including my husband and my baby of three years. Yeah, that's not really a question there. So if I come to Canada with PR, I'm not sure what PR is. And if I start searching for a job after landing in Canada, how many days will it take to get a job? Once again, that's completely up to you. That's, um, I mean, it's just hard to know. I mean, I would, I would get a job first and then move over, um, or transfer with your own company. I think that's a good way to go about it. Uh, it's just hard to know. It depends on how aggressive you're going to be and how aggressive you're willing to be. Um, so another question is, will IETLS score, will that help me get a desirable job? Once again, I don't really know what that is. So, um, I don't think it will. Um, in the USA, we typically do experience. So however much experience you have is going to help you get into this industry faster. And that's going to be commensurate with how much pay you're going to get. So you have a lot of experience. You have nine years of clinical research experience. So that should help you. Um, what job role do I need to search for in Canada? Um, I would just look at your same job, data manager. That's going to be the easiest way. I would not look for different jobs or anything like that. Just make a clean transition over, get settled in Canada, and then you can start looking to climb the ladder. And then do you have any idea if there are any other countries where I can get a good job in clinical data management? Um, USA is always good. Um, I know a data manager in Mexico. Um, you know, Europe is always good. Um, and I mean, you're a data manager in India. I mean, I guess you want to leave uh, where you are in India, but I know I know there are a lot of clinical research jobs. A lot of people don't believe me, but there are a lot of clinical research jobs in India because I did a video on this before, how to get a clinical research job in India. And I looked on, uh, on Indeed and there were just jobs after jobs after jobs and they weren't even different titles. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so thank you for your question, your questions, and let's go ahead and move on to the next questions. Um, so next question I have is, hi, sir. I just want to make the right choice for getting into the clinical research field. I am from India and I'm about to complete two years working in clinical data management after my bachelor's of pharmacy degree. Please let me know if my work experience will be counted in USA or I should be doing certification programs for the same to get a job. I want to do a job related to the work I'm currently in, clinical data management. Your suggestions would be very helpful. So kind of going along the same path here, 
um, literally similar backgrounds. The other person, I just answered questions for them. We're also doing clinical data management. So um, that is interesting. So what will it count? Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't. What really counts is how well you can speak to the protocols and your actual experience. If your experience actually aligns with um, what kind of data, man data management experience we're looking for in the USA, uh, we're talking like data database building. Uh, we're talking about you know ability to answer queries, uh, ability to set up a database and manage a team that sets up a database. Um, you know think things of that nature. I mean, you would know better than I would know because I only know from the, the CRA side. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't if you have the right kind of experience. And it sounds like you do. Um, you don't say where you worked or if you worked for a CRO or you know a pharma company. But if you work for a CRO, I, I think the best way to, to kind of come over to the USA is to do it through that CRO. So... Um, I would, you know, talk to your manager about any job openings they may have in the USA or if they're going to let you transfer because it's only just, I don't know the exact, I mean, I'm guessing probably like six to eight hours. I don't know the exact uh, time difference. I remember it was a six hour time difference from the East Coast to London. Um, so I imagine maybe it's, I don't know, eight to 10 for India or in that range. So you might have to adjust your hours if you worked in USA and wanted to do the same job. But I could, it's definitely doable. Um, I think that uh, it's definitely possible with your experience because you do have a couple years experience um, to, to make that jump. So thank you for your question. Let's go on to the next question. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. All right, let's go. Let's go with this one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So this person asks if their degree is sufficient enough to enter the field of clinical research. They have a BS in psychology and with a bio and business minor and an MPH in biostats. So as I've said on this channel many times before, your degrees do not matter that much, especially your advanced degrees. Um, you know, I had a major in psychology coming up too, and essentially a bio minor, but not really. It wasn't, it was an unofficial minor because I did it. I did it just to get the prerequisites for med school. But, um, you know, I was a major in psychology also, and it really, it really doesn't matter. You just, you just have to get in and get your experience. And then they'll ask you about your experience. Like I, I never get asked about college anymore once you've had your first job all they care about is what you did in that in your previous job in your previous jobs once you get into the working world your what you did in college in high school has they don't care at all they don't care about your grades they don't care about cum laude or summa cum laude all they care about is if you can do the job and make them money at the end of the day that's what they care about so you know your degrees do, do not really matter you're not going to be utilizing really them really in clinical research uh, unless you know you're like a hardcore scientist developing the developing the drugs. Um, you're really not going to be using that much stuff. You know you're not going to be you know analyze you know using like Pavlov's law and all this psychology stuff, classical conditioning. You're not going to be using that to you know to to do stuff. You're going to be doing in your entry level job. You're going to be doing a lot of data entry. A lot of reconciliation, a lot of matching, a lot of basic skills you learn in like second and third grade. That's what you're going to be doing in your entry level job. Um, but, you know, what you learn from college, your ability to talk to people, the ability to manage tasks, the ability to, you know, prioritize. That's what you're that's really what you're going to be using, not the actual stuff that you learned. So your degrees don't matter. Um, you have an MPH. And then master's of public health and biostats. OK. Once again, you're not really going to be using that uh, that much. Um, it looks cool. I don't. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, MP, people with MPHs do the same job I do, and they. You know, I've worked with people that, you know, were dentists. I've worked with people that had PhDs doing the same entry level job I was doing. So it really doesn't help. Um, you might get a couple extra bucks thrown your way, but it's not going to be much. 
um, because they can just get someone without it and pay them a little bit less. So, so look, I mean, yeah, that th your degrees are definitely sufficient at the end of the day is what I'm saying. Um, but just to reiterate that for new, uh, new subscribers. Um, so let's see. Um, this person also emailed in Sam. Um, they received an invite for MedPace, who is going to be hosting a networking event. Um, and they said that they are, you know, MedPace is growing. MedPace is a CRO, by the way. Um, and, and, and yeah, by the way, if, if you haven't seen my Glassdoor review on them, you should check that out. Um, I'll probably do another one soon because that one uh, was probably a couple years old by now. But um, I haven't seen anything new come out, but um, we'll see. I'll definitely have to take a look. Um, they said, since they're growing, hopefully they have changed since then. I'm definitely not picky about the salary, as I feel like it should be around 47 to 50K, which is fine. Um, so basically, they want to know how they can prepare for this kind of networking event and what they should do to prepare for a networking event. So the number one rule at one of these networking events is you are being interviewed the entire time. Whether you're talking to someone who's looking for a job, whether you're talking to the janitor, whether you're talking to the hiring manager or project manager or or anybody like that. So you imagine everyone you're talking to is interviewing you. You do not want to um, you know, relax your guard just because you're talking to an, another interviewee. Um, assume you're being watched the entire time. And they're going to take these cues, these cues, uh, they're going to take these cues seriously that they get. Because um, a lot of the times it's not going to be, you know, just how you're interacting with them face to face. It's going to be how you're also interacting with people who can't do anything for you immediately. So, um, you know, the best thing to do, obviously, is come prepared, bring your business cards, bring your resumes, bring copies of your resumes. Um, be prepared to, you know, hand them out if they ask. Be prepared to talk to people at the inter at the uh, networking event um, you know be prepared to talk about your interests be pre know a little bit about the company know a little bit of it about what interests you about that company and what kind of roles you're looking for and what you're really looking for and how you can help um, so yeah that's what I would say about the networking event you definitely want to prepare for it come prepared and you definitely want to dress professional um, a lot of times they may have like what kind of outfit to wear, but if not, um, if it's a networking event, you want to definitely wear a suit and come in your interview best because you are being interviewed whether it seems like it or not. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of companies have these hiring events, so you definitely want to make sure that um, you, when you do hear about them that you do RSVP and that you are early and prompt. And um, that, you know, most of all, you are as professional as you can be, as professional and personable as you can be. So I hope that was helpful. Um, let's see. I think that's all the questions I'm going to do today. This video is already, this episode is already getting close to 20 minutes. Um, so it's close to 20 questions. Um, so as always, guys, if you have... Um, any questions you would like to ask, email me eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. Um, if you have interest in the resume review program or interview preparation, you can also email me there also. Take care, guys.